All right, so after a couple of delivery delays, I finally have my 10 Tesla Model X battery modules. So each one's about 5.3 kilowatt hours, and I'm just going to give you a, like an overview of the different features and why I chose them. So what I'm going to start with here is on each module, <coughs> there's what is essentially a small BMS. It's called a balance board, which balances each uh, cell group. So in each of these modules, there's six cell groups in series. Each cell group has 74 individual cells. You can see the little cells here in parallel. And so this board is what balances the different cells uh, and essentially functions as a BMS, does most of the BMS functions and receives signal through these, these wires here, which communicate with like a BMS controller uh, that controls the balancing settings and whatnot. And also on each battery module, as you can see here, there's these two orange caps. So what these are is they're terminal covers for the positive and negative terminals on each module. The one on the right is the positive terminal. The one on the left is the negative terminal, and that's the same for uh, every module. So I've got my uh, multimeter here. I'm going to show you the voltage. All right, so let's test some. Twenty four point zero two volts. So I tested all the modules and they're all between twenty four point zero zero and twenty four point zero three, which is good. It means that they're uh, very closely balanced, which is important, especially when you're going to parallel modules as I'm going to do. Uh, because if you have a large vol voltage discrepancy when you're connecting the modules in parallel, you can get a large amount of uh, inrush current between modules and that can cause a lot of issues or even destroy the modules. So one of the issues that you might run into if you try to pull too much current out of these modules is uh, blown cell fuses. So each one of these cells here on both the positive and negative terminals, so both sides, has a small fuse wire. Let's see if it can focus. So do you, if you see those tiny little metal wires, so if too much current is pulled out of any one of these cells, that wire will melt and disconnect that cell from the pack, from the module and from the pack. So if you're popping a bunch of these fuse wires, your voltage is going to go all over, and then more fuse wires are going to pop, and it just goes downhill from there. Uh, and then your module is essentially destroyed, unless you want to do about, let's see, there's 450-ish cells, so about 900 spot welds. These fuses uh, also serve a very important role for safety. So if you try to pull too much current out of them or if you charge them with, with too much current and those fuses pop, it prevents these cells from overheating and potentially catching fire, which is one of the biggest risks with uh, lithium ion batteries is thermal runaway. Because once they get to a certain point, a uh, certain temperature, they'll just keep heating up and lithium ion fires supply their own oxygen so even if you cut off an outside oxygen supply like the air they'll keep burning which makes them especially dangerous um, so these fuses are a very important part of the of the uh, Tesla vehicles safety especially in the event of a car crash if there's a short, short circuit or any other uh, catastrophic event each battery module also has these plastic covers on both sides of the module. And these are especially important because of how these modules are designed and that this entire metal surface here under this cover acts as a conductor and is, uh, has current passing through it. So if you didn't have these plastic covers, if something were to touch one side and touch the other side, you'd have a, a completed circuit and a short circuit, which is something you obviously want to avoid. And these plastic covers also say Tesla on them, which I think is kind of neat. Uh, it's, if you can tell on the video, it's kind of hard to see. You can see here that each module also has these two aluminum protrusions. And what, are the, what these are, are coolant inlet and outlet uh, connections. So in this module, it's liquid cooled. There's a winding system of these aluminum hoses that goes around 
and makes contact with every single one of these cells. You can see one of the cells in there. So it makes contact with every single one of these cylindrical cells uh, through this uh, silicone-like intermediate material. And that wicks heat away from them, enables them to uh, sustain high performance, uh, sustain high loads. But what it also has is when it's, when it's cold out, uh, in order to allow for charging, because lithium batteries have to be at least above freezing to charge without creating dendrites, which damages the cells, uh, is that heated coolant can run through these, these modules, through these coolant uh, inlet and outlet ports, and make sure that the battery is at a, an ideal operating temperature. Uh, one other feature of these modules is that on, this, on each side of the modules, there's this plastic rail which is how they're mounted inside the Tesla battery pack. You can see the one on the other side here as well. So instead of resting just on the bottom, like I have them sitting here, they're suspended on metal uprights, essentially, that holds the modules off the bottom of the battery box, of the battery housing. Um, and I haven't decided if I want to build a battery box like that or if I just want to rest them on the bottom. What most people do is that they just rest them on the bottom and that's just fine. But if you're stacking a lot of these, at a certain point you don't want too much weight on top of these. So at a certain point you're essentially, you're more or less forced to use these mounting rails 